Welcome. Vitam in St. Joseph Church. We welcome so many people today. I think I'll get a selfie before the end of the Mass to show that this church deserves to be filled with people with, with, in whom the Polish hearts are beating. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for being here with us during this 125 anniversary of the moment when the 30 men gathered together in order to begin everything. The St. Joseph Society and then St. Joseph Church. They did it for us. So let us now, during this Mass, remember them and begin with sign of the cross. W imię Ojca i Syna i Ducha Świętego. Amen. Miłość Boga Ojca, łaska naszego Pana Jezusa Chrystusa i dar jedności Duchu Świętym, niech będą z wami wszystkimi. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the best. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. Lord Jesus. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Przechmogący Boże, spraw aby nasza wola była zawsze Tobie oddana i abyśmy szczerym sercem służyli Twojemu Majestatowi przez naszego Pana Jezusa Chrystusa, Twojego Syna, który z Tobą żyje i króluje w jedności Ducha Świętego, Bóg przez wszystkie wieki wieku. for the reading from the scripture. Pierwsze czytanie z księgi proroka Izajasza. To mówi Pan o swym pomazańcu Cyrusie. Ja mocno ująłem go za prawicę, aby ujarzmić przed nim narody i królom odpiąć broń od pasa. Aby otworzyć przed nim podboje, żeby się bramy nie zatrzasnęły. Z powodu sługi mego, Jakuba Izraela, Mojego wybrańca nazwałem Cię Twoim imieniem, pełnym zaszczytu, chociaż mnie nie znałeś. Ja jestem Pan i nie ma innego. Poza mną nie ma Boga. Przypaszę Ci broń, chociaż mnie nie znałeś, aby wiedziano od wschodu słońca aż do zachodu że beze mnie nie ma niczego. Ja jestem Panem i nie ma innego. Oto Słowo Boże. Bogu mi będzie.
Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. We know that you are a truly truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. They handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar. And he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Faryzeusze odeszli i naradzali się, jakby pochwycić Jezusa w mowie. Posłali więc do Niego swych uczniów razem ze zwolennikami Heroda, aby mu powiedzieli, Nauczycielu, wiem, że jesteś prawdomówny i drogi Bożej w prawdzie nauczasz. Na nikim ci też nie zależy, bo nie oglądasz się na osobę ludzką. Powiedz nam więc, jak ci się zdaje. Czy wolno płacić podatek Cezarowi, czy nie? Jezus przejrzał ich przewrotność i rzekł, czemu nie kusicie obłudnicy? Pokażcie mi monetę podatkową. Przynieśli mu denary. On ich zapytał, czy jest ten obraz i napis. Odpowiedzieli, Cezar. Wówczas rzekł do nich, oddajcie więc Cezarowi to, co należy do Cezara, a Bogu to, co należy do Boga. Oto słowo Pańskie. Bishop Sulit. Good morning. Please be seated. Ooh. 
I'm delighted to be here briefly uh, just to address uh, the congregation who are present here and to give thanks uh, to God for the 125 years of ministry that has happened out of this parish, out of this community, on behalf of uh, Polish immigrants and Polish Americans. And to recognize that, I think, is very important. And to give God deepest thanks for all over the years who in any way were responsible for that. And those who kept that tradition alive and in later years in the face of many difficulties. So we give God thanks because we recognize the importance of what is done in the parish. A parish is vitally important to the work of our church. In fact, I would always say, you want to know what the church does, look at the local parish. That's where the church is at her best. That is where the church expresses fully the Christian life. That is where Jesus Christ is celebrated, remembered, and made present, especially through the Holy Sacraments. And so when we think on 125 years of the presence of the Lord Jesus, his real presence, we can only but give God thanks. And as we do that, we think of all those who in any way made this happen. Of course, there were priests and pastors and clergy and religious women, but there were many, many, probably thousands of lay men and lay women who made that happen. And for all of that and for all of them, we remember with deep thanksgiving and give God thanks for them. And as we celebrate and look back on history, it's very important that we look forward to the future and to this new configuration of St. Joseph's Parish here in Camden. That indeed, a future, not exactly like the past, but a future that respects the past and the traditions of the past and builds on the past, but looks to tomorrow and to the, please God, many, many tomorrows that are to come. So I'm delighted to just uh, interrupt the Mass, if you will, to have these few words with you. I just drove down the turnpike from New York City. I was at an important event there uh, yesterday, and I'm on my way to uh, Stratford to celebrate the White Mass, which we do every year with Catholic healthcare workers. That's at uh, 1130, I believe. I want to thank Father John Fisher for his wonderful administration of, of St. Joseph's as part of the Cathedral Parish. I want to recognize the work of Father Chris here and his work on the campus at Rutgers University. And certainly, as I said, thank all the priests who have been associated with this parish, those who are still among us, and uh, in, with deep memory, we, we pray for all those who have gone before and rest in peace. So God bless you all. I wish you a very happy day. And uh, I certainly look forward to a future where uh, St. Joseph's uh, Church, as part of the Cathedral Parish, will continue to contribute its, uh, its traditions and um, its wisdom, and especially with respect uh, to the, the Polish tradition. May God bless you all. We want to welcome Bishop Sullivan by our traditional singing. Please stand and sing. Stola, stola,
unfortunately, the Saxony run brought my time and brought it to the end of my family. I had a seven minutes. Now I have only a minute and a half. <laughs> but what I was going to say is to really be very happy and welcome everyone. Welcome those who came here. Welcome those who watch us through the internet. We have that internet connection with the whole world. A lot of people today watch us from Poland, from North Dakota, from Wyoming, from California. They send in us letters and notes and they're watching us, wherever they are. Especially those who cannot go to church anymore. They watch the Masses on TV and then they watch the Mass here. Witamy wszystkich bardzo serdecznie. Ci, którzy przyszli, witamy tych, którzy oglądają nas przez kamerę. Bardzo serdecznie witamy i dziękujemy, że nas oglądacie. My name is Father Krzysztof Torek. I was administrator of St. Joseph Parish for a year, from last August 15 until August 1st or July 31st this year. It was a privilege for me and Anna to be the administrator. When I was ordained in the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, Monsignor Bucha, a few days before, he said, where do you have your first Mass, please? And I said, in Wildwood, New Jersey, St. Anne's Church. That's where I was deacon. He said, no, that Sunday, your first Mass is here at St. Joseph Paul's Parish in Camden. When you leave the cathedral, you stop here and we'll have Mass at 5 p.m. And I came here with my friend, with my mom, my godfather, my friends, priests from all over East Coast, Michigan, Detroit, anywhere they could come. And we all came here, and I hope that you remember how it was my first Mass here at this altar. Saying first time as a priest, niech będzie pochwalony Jezus Chrystus. I came from Poland to be for the Polish people, to bring the Polish people closer to God. And I have a question. Why we are here today? Why are we celebrating events, dates and history that took place long ago? Events that took place long before you were born? The answer is simple. Dlaczego my tutaj wszyscy jesteśmy? Dlaczego my tu teraz jesteśmy obchodząc uroczystości rzeczy, które zdarzyły się bardzo dawno temu? Wydawałoby się, że kogo to obchodzi? It's very simple. In the very broadest sense, the Roman Catholic Church we belong to is a community of remembrance, connecting us to the ongoing history of salvation as it has been lived and experienced by our ancestors for the past 2,000 years. It is our continual pathway to eternal life, to which we are going to belong, if not to the way of life that leads us to eternal life. Through scripture and revelation and tradition, the Church teaches us about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Historical events with spiritual impact has radically influenced the history of the world and the lives of each one of us. It's salvation. Salvation history shapes our contemporary existence and teaches and guides us for the future in eternity. To jest bardzo ważne, że my jesteśmy, należymy do tej ciągłości życia. Należymy do ciągłości życia, która prowadzi nas do życia wiecznego i musimy pamiętać o tym, co się zdarzyło, że jesteśmy tutaj. Musimy pamiętać o tych, którzy dla nas wybudowali tą świątynię. Musimy pamiętać, że to oni ciężką pracą przyczynili się do tego, że my teraz możemy tutaj być. Here, for two millennia, Christians have created a rich history to the ways in which we like the apostles can walk with Jesus, imitate Jesus, and live with the words of the gospel. I took that word from Cardinal Jewish recent visit to St. Hedwig, Silesian, when they were talking about anniversary. But here at St. Joseph Church, 
We have a rich history as well. Many decades ago in Camden, immigrants from Poland gathered in different family homes in different locations to, be, in, to worship and practice their faith. Eventually, they decided they needed and wanted a building in which they could gather to pray and sing in the language spoken in their families and in their hearts. To oni właśnie zebrali się w domu Pana Wójtkowiaka, żeby zdecydować, że potrzebujemy polski kościół, że potrzebujemy wiary. They wanted to teach their children the traditions that for centuries kept the country of Poland united and strong, despite frequent wars and partitions. Wiara ochroniła Polskę przed rozpadem. They would divide their breakfast sandwiches in half, as I said many times, so they could eat the other half at lunchtime and donate the lunch money to help build a church. This church. That would be there to serve future generations. To serve us. They hoped that this would be a place where Polish Americans would come to thank God for his many gifts and ask for God's blessing in their lives, their families, their homes, and their work. Do you think that they, their prayer and hopes are fulfilled? Do you think that what they were hoping for is fulfilling today? Do you think that as they taught their children how to pray, as my, gra my grandma taught me, every morning waking me up and said, we have to say a prayer. And I'm like, no. And before I went to bed, I said, oh, I'm going to bed. And she said, no, 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 no. First, guess what we have to do? I said, I know, say the prayer. But she was really, really telling me how important it is to pray. She said, you will need God. Maybe not today because you're going to sleep or you're waking up. But someday you'll turn to God. My father died when I was nine. And when everything happened to me, I didn't know to whom to turn. Guess whom I turned to? God. I knew the prayers already. Bishop mentions that I am mentioned that I am campus minister at Rutgers University. And that's very important for him and ministry of the diocese. And I am and I feel very often surprised and the children do not know the prayers. Then the parents did not teach them the prayers then the parents did not teach them what they need to have and know. The parents told them if they give them credit card, car, you know, some money, everything will be fine. And I'm asking them, are you Roman Catholic? And they are like, Bashu, uh, my mom is. I said, who are you? I guess I'm Christian. Well, you guess you're Christian. Who do you want to be? A Buddhist. Oh. That's authentic. I asked the first student when I was there, I said, do you pray, do you go to church? She said, no. I said, do you have anything against the church? She said, no. I said, so why you don't go to church? And she said, why? My parents never taught me that it's important. I said, so what will you do when you go to eternal life? She said, I don't know. I said, well, do you care about this? I don't know. I said, are you working to go to eternal life, to good place? I don't know. I said, do you want to go to eternal life? I guess. I said, okay, what do you do to be prepared for exams? Well, I, I study. I said, do you want to be prepared for eternal life? Yeah. I said, so what do you do? I don't know. Can you imagine my reaction to it? Why you don't know what your parents and grandparents forgot to teach you? How to live, how to breathe, how to pray, how to turn to God in the knee? They just let you go like 
undress during the freezing winter and, and say, ah, they'll take care of themselves. Really? Everything that we know somehow comes from what we learn. Of course, we cannot learn everything. But we can learn how to turn to the right way. That's why we go for driver license before test is started. So we know where to turn. So we not just close our eyes and say, hey, woohoo, we're driving. Right? That's what it is. Would you let your child go with closed eyes straight on highway? Well, yes, you will. Because that's what you do in that pathway of faith. You just tell them, hey, close your eyes and keep going. Somebody will straighten up. What is the responsibility of the parents? This is not too late. We can still go home, write an email to your family member. They say, hey, Father Christoph said, and they will be like, what? That's, he said, I'm going to come, I'm going to meet with you, I'm going to teach you the prayer. I'm going to equip you with what you need in this life. So you can have them in heaven. Would you like to have your family members in heaven? Why don't you? How many of you would like to have your families in heaven? Okay, how many of you write an email to them or call them to get them? Yes? That's what's important. Musimy nauczyć nasze dzieci, jak się modlić. Musimy nauczyć, jak używać wszystkich tych rzeczy, które mamy tutaj na, na ziemi, żeby dostać się do nieba. Musimy do nich pisać e-maile, pisać listy, pisać wszystko, co możemy robić, żeby oni tam też byli z nami w niebie. Zapytałem się, kto chce, żeby inni byli w niebie. Podnieśli wszyscy ręce. Really? If this is really your desire to have them in heaven, the day is today. 125th anniversary of when the men gathered together to prepare the way so then you and your children can go to heaven. Are you with me? Will you do that today? Yes. I had a funeral in black community. They all say, Amen. Right? Let's say together. Amen. Yes, thank you. We need to be alive in today's world. We need to bring this world to God. We see what happened in the world when we forget about bringing the world to God. We have blessed Virgin Mary, our patrons. Saint Luke, Father Adam, on our convocation, was talking the history of Polish black Madonna. He said, he doesn't speak in Polish, but he said, I am Polish. I was surprised. Adam Chichowski was is ordained Polish priest. He doesn't speak Polish. He speaks now, he learns how to speak Spanish. But he, everywhere he goes, he said, I am Polish. I was so surprised he came in front of the whole presbyterian of the priests last Wednesday and he said, I am Polish. And I want to tell you how important this Blessed Virgin Mary called Black Madonna. He said, St. Luke, while he was talking to Blessed Virgin Mary and she was describing to him the life of Jesus, he was sitting at the table, he drew, because she was like posing, sitting and talking to him, right? He drew on a board her picture. And that's the miracle. St. Luke draw that image of Blessed Virgin Mary, what we call now Black Madonna. And then they cut that wood, and then the wood was going from one place to another, end up in Hungary with Polish father, and they brought it one time to Czestochowa, Poland. That's the image. In the background you can see the wood that is painted on. St. Luke painted that. You know who painted Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? If I say God painted, would you believe me? No! Juan Diego came with his you know, material, and Bishop didn't believe him, and Blessed Virgin Mary said, go and bring him flowers. And he put the flowers, and on his cloth was that painting. It was God who painted that. Do you believe that? All the people who live, uh, believe in Guadalupe, they know that. That was not a man. 
That was God who painted Our Lady of Guadalupe. Read the history, Google. Now you have Black Madonna, Our Lady from Chestnut And people are painting her copies to spread the picture all over the world. Very, 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 very almost identical copies in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. The man who restored at one point that blessed, that Black Madame, we call it Black Madame, right? Or Pope John Paul II called Our Lady of Yasnagura. Our Lady of Yasnagura, right? John Paul II called. So Black Madonna, the man who restored the original picture, came to Doylestown to work on that copy that is in Doylestown. Not human being painted. Said, so look, under the impression of God, and that's how the story goes. Guadalupe was painted by God. This is not a story from TV show. This is not a soap opera. This is a real life and interaction between God and human beings. This is something that we believe in. You know the difference between believing and the fact. You believe that, you know, the man in the red suit is in the back. Yeah? Do you see him? Don't turn. Do you believe me that there's a man in a red suit? Actually, two of them. In the back? Do you believe me? That's the believing. When you turn your head and say, oh, yeah, it's Francis and Stephen. No more believing. You see it. Believing is that desire, that hope that we have in our heart. God help us to believe. He sent us the picture. He sent the message to the children of Fatima. People didn't believe and then they saw the sun going differently than usual. Guadalupe is still there. I sing in front of the picture of Guadalupe. Please Google it because they just recently found out that in the eye of the lady is the image of upside down of this picture. Nobody could in 15th century paint that. God did that. Then look, did that. This is not the soap opera. This is our life. This is how we should walk step by step and how we should teach our children. We have a funeral here. And always during the funerals I say, you know, we still have a chance. We still have a few days, a few months, maybe a few years. I want to live 845 years, but I know that I wouldn't. So we still have time. 125. You celebrate it today. I know that you belong to other parishes, then you move to other areas of New Jersey, but because of the graciousness of Bishop Sullivan, we have now Polish apostolate, which means that we embrace the whole diocese of Camden as the only Polish church in this diocese. We want you to be active in that. We want you to tell your children that that's the way to learn. That they should learn in English, but they should also learn tradition in Polish. They should learn about Black Madonna, Our Lady of Yasnagura. They should learn about Guadalupe. They should learn about God's existence in our life. This is not the Xbox game. This is our life. And if you care, then your children and your family will be living in heaven. Please do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now stand as we profess our faith. We, I believe in one God.
after we got fired up and have fire in our hearts with hope and faith that we will carry to our homes today. Let us now turn to God and ask Him in our prayers for His presence in our lives. And all members of the church may grow more and more in offering of self to God. We pray to the Lord. That all nations may grow in caring for their people, and especially those most in need. We pray to the Lord. That those with plenty and those with little may work and share together. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, we now see God in person. We pray to the Lord. Abyśmy byli ludźmi wiary. Ciebie prosimy. Abyśmy byli ludźmi nadziei. Ciebie prosimy. Abyśmy byli ludźmi miłości i kochali wszystkich, szczególnie tych, którzy są daleko od Chrystusa. Ciebie prosimy. Abyśmy byli ludźmi, którzy ufają, którzy ufają Chrystusowi i pragną, abyśmy wszyscy znaleźli się w Królestwie Niebieskim. Ciebie prosimy. Abyśmy byli ludźmi odwagi, aby modlić się, aby nauczać wszystkich innych. Abyśmy byli ludźmi odwagi. Jak papież mówił, nie bójcie się. Ciebie prosimy. Abyśmy byli ludźmi modlitwy. Abyśmy się modlili za tych, którzy budowali ten kościół. Za tych, którzy są na cmentarzu świętego Józefa. Którzy byli tutaj i teraz tam są czekając na nas. Abyśmy modlili się za nich za nasze rodziny w Polsce, za tych wszystkich, którzy są w naszych sercach, którzy pragną naszych modlitw, za tych, którzy są chorzy, umierający w szpitalu, za tych, którzy oglądają nas przez internet, za tych wszystkich. Ciebie prosimy. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we now prepare for operatory procession.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Miłosierny Boże, daj nas prawdziwą swobodą ducha pełnić służbę przy Twoim ołtarzu. Niech ofiara, którą składamy mocą Twojej łaski oczyści nas z grzechu. Przez Chrystusa Pana naszego. On
ser ikonatni. Zapraszam się, że w porze żydło wszelkiej świętości. Dlatego stajemy przed Tobą i zjednoczeni z całym Kościołem. Uroczyście odchodzimy pierwszy dzień tygodnia, w którym Jezus Chrystus zmartwychwstał i zesłał na apostołów Ducha Świętego. Przez Chrystusa prosimy Ciebie, Wszechmogący Boże, uświęć te dary mocą Twojego Ducha, aby stał się dla nas ciałem i krwią naszego Pana Jezusa Chrystusa. On to dobrowolnie wydał się na mękę, wziął chleb i dzięki Tobie składając łama i rozdawał swoim uczniom mówię. Jeszcze i jedzcie z tego wszyscy. To jest bowiem ciało moje, które za Was będzie wydane. Podobnie po wieczerze wziął kiedy i ponownie dzięki Tobie składając, podał swoim uczniom mówiąc, bierzcie i pijcie z niego wszyscy. To jest bowiem kielich krwi mojej, nowego i wiecznego przymierza, która za Was i za wielu będzie wylana na odpuszczenie grzechu. To czyńcie na moją pamięć. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all those for whom we pray at this Mass, for all those who build this church, for all those who have the courage to gather together and begin, for all those who are now at St. Joseph Seminary watching us, our leader, for all those from our family and friends, that we pray for them today. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fell, fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is you forever and ever. Say, our Father. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every good. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Son of the Lamb.
Senhor Jesus. This is just a thank you to everyone who came here. As you know, October 22nd is St. John Paul II feast day because on October, October 22nd, 1978, was installation of John Paul II as the Pope for Roman Catholic Church. Today we celebrate that for Saint, Saint John Paul II. And today we have the blood, the drop of blood that is exposed here in the center of the altar. Its presence, presence of our Pope, John Paul II, in this parish is very crucial for all those who are of Polish descent. Do you remember the moment when you found out that the Pope was Polish? I remember I was coming from work and I heard on 12 o'clock news, it was a communistic regime then, and they just said in the middle of the news, you know, this happened, this happened, oh, by the way, the Polish Cardinal has chosen the Pope, and the next news, and everybody, <laughs> what? And people all going from work. And there was not cars, there was mostly street cars and buses and everything. They left the buses and the, and the streetcars and they walked to the church. They filled the churches in Poland. And they stayed there until, I guess, 5 p.m. Pray. What happened? They came to the church and they knocked at the pastor's door and said, Tell me, is that true? And the pastor said, Yes. We need to pray. In Thanksgiving. So today, we pray Thanksgiving. We are blessed by the presence of St. John Paul II, first class relic here, drop of his blood. But we need to remember also all those who brought about this church. Those first two men who got in Mr. Kowiak place. On the Sunday afternoon of January 27, 1891, 
30 men gathered in the home of Joseph Wojtkowicz in the 1100 of Kieran Avenue, next door. The, they formed St. Joseph's Society, named for the patron saint of workers and fatherhood. And later, they would give the parish in South Kingdom its name, St. Joseph. Today we have direct descendant of her grandfather, Albert Vukovia. We have today among us Kani Wilkie. Please stand, Kani. We have the closest relative to those who gathered and built the church. Welcome her with <laughs> That's her. She has difficulties to walk. She has difficulties to move, but she is here every Mass, and she remembers that family who began this St. Joseph Church. We have to remember all the pastors. First those who came in and out, not being named pastors, and then Reverend Michael Barinsky, the first secretary treasurer of Diocese of Trenton, who became the first pastor. Then Matthias Tarnowski, then John Sipinski, then Reverend Stephen Dierzynski, then Reverend Franciszek Czarnecki, then Wojciech Tomaszewski, who was administrator here. Then, of course, Arthur B. Stransky, because of whom this church is as it is. Please, applause, Monsignor Stransky. Then Monsignor Władysław Bazel, who was named by the bishop as Monsignor Stransky retired. We remember Siostry Nazaretanki, Sister Nazaretanki, Siostry Felicianki, who taught in this school. We also have an honor today to have sisters, little servant sisters of Immaculate Conception from Cherry Hill. They are part of this parish, they come here. Please welcome them. We want to thank to those whom we remember. And when I came to this diocese in 1988, 89, 20, almost 25 years ago, more, and they told me, do you remember Monsignor Stransky? He just died. We thought he never will. He was almost 100 years old. That was from other parishes. Then I came here, and people from here said, oh, you missed Monsignor Stransky. He was a lovely, lovely man. He drove his car, they just told me this yesterday, the name of the car, Puppet, yes? He drove his car speeding down the Mount Ephraim Avenue. And the altar servers who were going to Little Servant Sisters for morning mass at 6 o'clock on New Year's, on Christmas Day, they were not sitting at their back seats, they were laying on the floor, skirt. And he was driving. I remember Monsignor Bucci. I told you the story. I came here and Bishop McHugh said to me, well, where do you want to go? I said, well, I'm Polish, I guess, the Polish parish. He said, nah, you learn English too fast and too good. I said, well, I can always unlearn it. He said, no, no, no. You, I will send you to English parish. There's a lot of Polish priests. They will go there, but I don't know how long this parish will be still existence. But I was coming to pray, and then Monsignor Vucha, before my ordination, said what he said. Your first Mass is in the Polish church, Chris. In the Polish church. I said, how can we prepare? It's like a few days from now. I took care of everything. The PKM dancers were here. The Polka band, I brought one from Michigan. The other, uh, Big Daddy Lapskowski, if you follow Polka band people. So Big Daddy Lapskowski came, especially because I knew him in Ocean Lake in Michigan. He flew over, especially to big star of the Polka band industry. He came from Michigan and he was another Polka band here. 
The hall upstairs was filled with people. My mom was surprised. I said, wow. So I ran to Monsignor. I said, Monsignor, what can I do? He said, when you become a pastor of this parish, I said, Monsignor, I will never become. Bishop just told me I've learned. No. When you become the pastor of this parish, I said, Monsignor Butcher, with all the regrets that I have, and I told you this, I really believe I'm never going to be. Listen to me, Chris. When you will become the pastor of this Polish parish, of this Polish church, I ask you one thing. Take care of this church. Take care of these people. So, in Bishop Sullivan, last year, <laughs> called me to his office and said, Chris, did you go to work today? I said, yeah. Did you play there with your band? I said, yeah. When? I said, before the opening mass, before the Pope came. How did you do that? Without the diocese? I said, yeah, I have a group in Longport, New Jersey, I have a group in Germany, and I have a group in Poland that my nephew organized. We bond them together. We call it International Rock Gospel Group. I send the recordings to the Vatican, Vatican approve it, and I play. He said, I see. I want to send you to the Rutgers University. Do you see that building over there? And I look, I said, no, that one. So I still didn't see, I said, oh, no, no. The new building that they built for 800 students. I know which one is now, it's right next to this city hall. He said, do you see that building? I said, no. I want you to go there and bring all the kids to the church, to God. I said, okay. Well, no big deal, right? Okay. I said, I'm not afraid to go. Oh, and I said, where do I live? Oh, oh yeah, um, you live in St. Joseph, Polish. I'm like, Monsieur Bucha, what am I going to do? So I drove to the cemetery later and I asked Monsignor Bucha, what can I do? Tell me. With help of Mrs. Khan, you can. We did it. Especially thanks to Mrs. Pat Quok, everybody who is here to fight for this church. So I remember Monsignor Bucha. Then it was Father Shamotsky, Peter Shamotsky, as you know, then Father Lupinski. Then Father Pavel Kishkevich. Then Father Storek as administrator. We renewed the hall. We reconstructed the beauty of the rector. We put a conditional in the hall during that year that I was here. I could go back to Monsignor Bucha in August and say, I think I did it. It's beautiful. Today, we thank you for Monsignor Pokusa, who came here today to be with us. Yeah. We thank Father Edna Notka, who is here today with us. And we thank to Father Fisher, the new um, administrator of the Polish parish, and he was named by the bishop, the new coordinator of the Polish apostolate. He just left now to say the mass in Spanish in the cathedral. So he's right here. Thank you, Father Fisher. Please greet him again because he's still with us. I want to thank all of you who came here.
Thank you, St. Lucia Choir, Mrs. Szechulski, and Darek, our organist. We weren't sure if he's coming, but he came. Thank you, Darek. <laughs> All the committees who prepared this beautiful celebration. I do not want to mention all your names because there were so many wonderful people. And Mrs. Jackie or Mrs. Joanne or somebody will say, you didn't mention me. So I said, thank you to everybody, right? I did, Joanne and Jackie, right? And the society, Secret Heart Society, Open Rosary Society, I mean, just Open Society, right? No, just Rosary Society, I'm sorry. It is one on the other, so it's just Rosary Society. Mrs. Pat Koka said, now we don't take off the altar. Other people take care of the altar. We are Rosary Society. We pray for this parish. Thank you, Mrs. Koka. <laughs> Before all your hands will be in pain and swollen from clapping, I want to thank Knights of Columbus for coming here today. PKM um, dancers or hostess, what they did today. Thank you for wearing the Polish national kind of costumes and being. I want to thank our Husaria Knight, who is here sitting with us. The other women, Knight of Poland. And I want to thank King Jan Sobieski. Where is he? King, please stand. And his wife, Maria Katarina. And the Shakhtar of Poland. And representative of the Shlachta of Poland, please stand. We are the government who will and we will serve Poland. I think that all the founders, the third demand who begin with courage to talk about St. Joseph's society, that all the founders will be happy and honored to see us today still celebrating faith and the Polish heritage, which is the main reason they organized this church and this community. May God continue to bless us all. Please stand as we now sing the song St. Joseph in Polish, we know, sing it. Święty Józefie, patronie nasz, święty Józefie, patronie nasz, módlcie, módlcie, módlcie za nas. One more time, everybody. Święty i przysposobi nas do życia wiecznego przez Chrystusa Pana naszego. Now we have a moment that we'll be all blessed by the first class relic. Using the first class relic of St. John Paul II. The Lord be with you. With 
lifted, present, an assistant of St. John Paul II. May we receive blessing of Jesus Christ, of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. May we open our hearts and minds to His presence. May we follow the words of the Pope who did call us how to live our life. And may Almighty God bless you and bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. I want to invite you anytime, especially for our healing masses that we have every second Saturday of the month. We have the healing mass for those of you who don't feel good, who would like to be healed by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to come here every second Saturday to receive the anointing with the whole oil and then to have opportunity to come and hold and kiss and embrace this first relic of St. John Paul II. Please spread that word. There is a lot of people who are hurt physically, spiritually, who need a healing, physical, spiritual. Please tell them about our healing mess on Saturday, every second Saturday. And also, I know that you belong to other parishes, but come once a month and be with us and receive the blessing and ask for St. John Paul II really to hold to embrace, to help us to live. But the most important, spread like the apostles the word among others, among those with whom you want to be in heaven. Niech będzie pochwalony Jezus Chrystus. Thank you for coming. Oh, we always sing Serdeczna Matka on the end. Can we sing that a cappella? Here we go. Serdeczna Thank you for coming.